Welcome to Life Transformation, a weekly podcast from Sunrise Church in Surrey, British Columbia. Stay tuned to hear inspiring messages and teachings, giving you hope and purpose, leading you to a life-changing relationship with Jesus as you follow Him. Hey, welcome to Sunrise Church. Is everyone alive this morning? Hey, good. Okay, I'm not going to see ask how you're doing because I usually get the pre-coffee, like it hasn't settled in yet response. Um, uh, Coach, can you bring me that mic? I'm going to need that mic for a second here. Um, hey, as we get into this uh, sermon today and this, this time in the Word, I don't know what your week has been like, but I, I sense that there's a lot of people who have been kind of fighting through stuff. And it feels like some of you are literally in the battle. Like it's like you're, you're in the ring. You feel like whether it's your past or whether you feel it's like the enemy that you're like fighting through stuff. And I just think that when you come to church, there should be something God does in the midst of worship in the word that should give you strength for the battle. And you should also see him as the ultimate overcomer. Are you with me? Now, I don't know if you felt like it's been a battle this week, but let me just tell you that, that God... And I've said this, you've heard me say this, so you don't tune me out if I've said it before and you're like, I've heard you say that. Um, but God is big enough to manage every tension in your life, okay? And sometimes we think like, God, if I'm in a season where it's really great, like I'm doing good and things are going well, and then other people are in a season of like pain or grief, like, Lord, how do we do Well, God's big enough that he can manage all of that. That for you, if you're a young parent and your kids are waking you up at night, or if you're a parent of teenagers and your kids are waking you up at night, or if you're a boomer and your kids have left following the faith and they're waking you up at night, Jesus can handle all of that. Are you with me? And I think he gives us enough strength for the battle because there's a promise in the word that he said, Moses said to the tribe of Asher, as your strength, so shall your days be. What does that mean? For every day you have, there's a strength for that day. For every day God gives you, there's strength for that day. The challenge is when we try to do it on our own. Are you with me? <laughs> this morning I woke up and I said to Jesus, Jesus, I do not have the strength for today. I do not have the wisdom for today. I do not have the knowledge for today. I don't even have the word of God for today. But you do. So I think that a lot of us might feel like we're on the edge of something, entering into a season of favor or a season of goodness, but we're fighting for it. Margie, would you come and just share the word that you, that you had and... Uh, I want to pray for people even before we get into this, because I think God wants to see his people in a victorious place, and it comes through connecting with the power of Jesus. So just share what you, you saw. In worship, I had um, a picture of um, a person, uh, us, walking towards the glory of God, and the closer that we got, the heavier we became, and the harder it was to move forward. And um, it was so hard to keep moving forward. This heaviness was so big that some people were actually turning, turning back and going the other direction. And I felt like the heaviness was um, like, a, like we're getting so close to the glory of God that our, our flesh doesn't approve. And our spirits are longing for it. We're longing to go deeper. We're longing to go further. And um, yeah, that was, that was the picture. So Yeah. You want to pray for that? And I kind of do. Let's do this. I think if you feel like that's you, that you've kind of been pressing forward and you feel like you're kind of in the battle... I want by faith for you to stand. Now just pause for one second because what the whisper of the enemy or the whisper of your own heart is going to say, I don't want to stand because I don't want to be standing out. When you stand, you know what it does? It's literally an act of faith responding to the word of God and you're putting your body in a posture of responding. And you know what it does? Because we're a family and we're a body, people pray for you. That's what happens. You can stand in proxy. That is perfect. So if you want to stand for yourself or someone else, let's stand and we're going to pray for you today and have Margie lead in prayer. We're going to ask the Spirit of God just work in this moment. Heavenly Father, you are good. You are always Thank good. You, Heavenly Father, you are pure and Thank light. You, you are hope. You are Thank our future. You, you are love. You are who we put our faith in. We put our faith in you because you have proven your faithfulness again and again and again. You are holy, Lord. And Father, we want nothing more than to move closer into that presence, mm. closer towards your glory, more into that transforming power that you have for us. And Lord, I just pray that we would have the perseverance 
that we would have um, the patience to keep taking steps forward even when it's hard. And Lord, I just pray for the the things that are, are heavy on us, the things that are weighing on us, the things that are keeping us bound and caught up in the flesh. Lord, I pray that in your grace and your mercy that you would break those things off so that we can move freely towards you, that we can see you face to face, that we can have our lives fully, fully engulfed in your glory right. and your presence. Lord, I pray that the world would know who we are. They would know who you are through us. They would know that we are Christians. They would know that we are followers of Christ because we have your presence, because you're going with us. I pray for peace over this place and just continue to do your awesome work in us, I pray. In Jesus' name. Just remain standing if you would. I just really feel like the Lord wants to say some, a few things to some of you and Scott, can you just get a little bit of just instrumental worship in the background? Could you? And if you're online, just, just hang with us because I think the Lord wants to deposit something today. And um, I just sense prophetically that some of you are standing because it's, it's in your family. It's like literally you and the immediate. And I see the Lord saying like this. In, in Ephesians, it says that every family gets named underneath him. And I see that what the Lord wants to do in your families is he wants to ascribe a new name to some of your families. Because the enemy has tried to label. Your experiences have tried to label. Even you have tried to put a label. And not like, no, I don't mean a good label. I mean there's been a broken label um, that's been put on. And I believe that the Lord, those of you who are standing for families, the Lord wants to break that off, and he wants to put a new name on your family today. And so I'm just going to pray prophetically over some of the names that I hear that has been put on your families. Um, I heard, I heard the word um, rejected. That some of your families have felt rejected, or you personally felt rejected from the Lord. And so, in Jesus' name, we remove that and the power of that name and all of its implications and all of the roots that it would tie to, and each and every place that that would go. And now we take the beautiful, wonderful name of beloved and adopted, and we ask that it go into every family here in Jesus' name. Lord, we come in the power of your name to resist that name rejection and to accept now adopted and beloved. Hmm. The other name I heard in the spirit is the, uh, the word failure. And I actually sense in the spirit that that word has been a generational word. It was over fa- your families before even you. So it goes back that, that someone planted like what we would uh, call a word curse over your family. Uh, so in the name of Jesus, for every person standing here today for family, who that word failure has been there, in Jesus' name and by the power of the name above every name, every dominion, every throne, every power, we bring that name off and we say that is broken in Jesus' name. Lord, you were made a curse for us on the tree that we might not be under a curse. So Lord, we come under the power of Calvary to have that curse removed. And in Jesus' name, where people have heard that word failure and that's been over their family, in Jesus' name, we ask for each person here and each person joining online that a new name would come. Mm. In the name I just hear the Lord just saying is he actually says, you're accepted. Because many times when you fail, or you feel failure, or your families have that name, it's like you, you can't go to the next place because there's failure of whatever kind. But the Lord says, no, you're accepted. And the Lord would remind you today that even the miracles that he did in the New Testament, it was about bringing people back into acceptable place of worship. The woman with the issue of blood, she couldn't be in worship because she'd had this issue constantly. So Lord Jesus wants to show you that you're accepted. So if you're standing for a family today and the word has been failure, we declare accepted in Jesus' name. Hmm. And just a second to that, there's some of you here today that have felt like by the choices you've made in the last, I mean months, like I, I sense it's like three to six months, that could be wrong, but there's some choices that have been made I'll say recently, that you, you have put that name on yourself, failure. 
and that the Lord wants to remove that. And I actually, I hear this, and I'm just getting real specific. This is what I hear. Some of you have made choices financially, and some of you made choices um, to do with investments or real estate is kind of what I sense. Now, that might not be totally what it is, but I sense it's in that realm. And you've put that label on you of failure, and the Lord wants to take that off. So in Jesus' name, that name comes off. Lord, we pray that even in the midst of circumstances that don't necessarily change, that you can change the name that's on us or the label that's on us. So, Father, we take that name off in Jesus' name, and we pray, Father God, people would have a new name put on them today. Accept it. Hmm. And the other word I hear uh, from the Lord today for you specifically in that is the word approved. Like the Lord's like, I've approved of you. I've approved of you. I've approved of you. And you might be listening online or might be watching this back later. It's for you. You might say, oh, I wasn't in that service. No, God's so big that he can have the Holy Spirit hover over the face of the earth in creation and have the Holy Spirit woven through all of the Bible until today. He's big enough to do that. Hmm. The other breakthrough I sense is that um, it has to do with a health diagnosis. And I sense as if um, the diagnosis that the doctors have given has almost almost become, it's, it seems so intense that it's almost become like a life sentence, like a death sentence. And I don't know if it's you or if it's your family member here, I can't discern that, but that the Lord wants to take that off. The Lord wants to take that off. So Jesus, any diagnosis that's been here in the name of Jesus that has become so intense, it's felt like it will inhibit life, it will inhibit healing. It will stop something, Lord. We come against that in the name of Jesus. We ask each person be released of that in Jesus' name. And each healing come to people in Jesus' name. Father, we ask for the work of Calvary to be appropriated here. Father, I speak that your name is above every sickness. And we ask now, Lord, that you exercise your power over sickness and over disease, especially over diagnoses that have come and have felt almost like death in Jesus' name. We plant life today because you are life. We plant life because there's life in your blood and the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Just uh, keep the music going there, Scott. And you can just grab a seat. Just want to be real sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing today. If he wants to kind of speak in that way again. I'll tell you this, that um, when the Holy Spirit starts working in your life and starts speaking truth to you, a moment in his presence is better than a lifetime of any therapy or counseling. It's not that we demean that. that there, there's legitimacy to that. But there's times when God appoints for you to be impacted so powerfully by his Spirit that it will literally change the course of your life, okay? This is the God we serve. It doesn't demean the others. It just means that there's times when we come into the presence of God and he has, boom, something for you, okay? And we need to receive that. Here's what I want you to do. If you, if you got a word or a prayer today, take time right now to write that down. Don't miss it, okay? Don't miss it. Okay, write it down. Pull out your phone, pull out your notebook. Write it down now. Two or three things, Okay? What I want the rest of us to do is if you, if you didn't feel like that prayer was for you, could you pray for the people right now that are writing down those words? And I want you to pray. We're just going to pray for about 45 seconds. Just bow your head and just pray, Lord, I pray for each of these people that are here today. And if you've never prayed, just pray real simple. God, help each one of these people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
So, Father, we pray for each of these things to be implanted into people today. Lord, the enemy would love to devour. In fact, it says in the book of Peter that he's going around like a lion seeking to devour. That he's been called the father of lies. And Lord, it's enough that we have the world around us that has a different set of values that opposes the very things of Jesus. It's enough that we have the battle of the flesh, Lord, that is so deep that, God, it causes so much. But then we have the enemy who's working. In Jesus' name, we pray that that will be stopped. And today, new things will be planted in Jesus' mighty name. And we say amen. 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 Does anyone want to uh, be brave today and just give a testimony of what God did? Anyone want to be brave today? I'm not going to push anyone out, but just ask you a couple of times. We'll wait. Anyone want to be brave? Tell us what God was doing in your life today. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do. <laughs> yeah, just come up here on stage. So. Well, it's not necessary. I was doing it through pro- proxy mm. for my. Uh, My son has a girlfriend. He's been with her for four years, and he has had a horrific life. Mm. And Satan's always attacking her. And there was an incident incident last night, and she just doesn't want to be here on this planet anymore because her she feels hurt all the mm. time. And they actually live. Uh, I felt God was calling about a year ago that we needed to bring her son back home. And ironically. Three months later, my son Parker texted me and said, Mom, we're, we have to move out of the place we're in. Wow. And I was like, thank you, God. Okay, here's my opportunity to bring <laughs> right. him home. And so we brought him home, and we renovated downstairs so they have a space all to themselves. It's like a suite. And last night, she had some friends over, and her, her fa- she doesn't have a family. She has mm-hmm. no one except for us. And when she was little, she was abused so many times. She prayed to God, help me, help me. And in her world now, he never helped her. So therefore, she's an atheist. Mm. And uh, my son has always been the one that wants to save right. someone. And last night, she, I could hear her cry and cry and say, I don't want to be here anymore. It's mm. too hard. It hurts too much. Right. And I'm always, so I just prayed last night and, Thank you for the prayer today because I I would just, I maybe need to pray more for her and help her. And I just want the wisdom. So if anybody too wants to give me some advice or some (laughs) wisdom, I am open to that because I just sometimes don't know how to talk to her. I do my best. I only come from one place, which is love. And she knows that. But when she puts up that wall, I don't know how to, well, I, 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 I'm not the one to do it. I just have to pray more. So what I wrote down is I have to pray more hmm. for her birth name is Daniela. She's choosing to be called Arson. So, hmm. but I believe God knows her as Daniela. Yeah. So I have to pray for her more. Well, let's, can we pray for her? Yeah, together please now? do. Yeah. Just stretch your hands out. Father, we pray for Daniela, who's called herself Arson. We pray, Lord Jesus, you would go now, right, to her heart, to her mind. And you would do a miracle today. Jesus, we know that you can bypass our minds many times and you can speak right into the inmost being. We pray, Father God, that you would do a miracle. Lord, it seems that there is a rescue needed that in our hearts and minds we know only comes through Jesus. So, Father, would you do that? Would you be victorious? Would there be change today? Whether it's miraculous or incremental, we give you the credit. And we ask for wisdom from heaven to come. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thanks Thanks for being brave today. I just think, too, as we're praying for that, if there's anyone who, whether it's you or in your family, that there has been struggles with uh, suicidal ideation, the Lord wants to speak to that today. Some of you, maybe it's just situational. There's things that are coming and and you've you've had those thoughts. Listen, the Lord knows and the Lord loves you. And he never turns away thoughts like that. He actually wants to hear those things because he wants to know you. So I want to pray today specifically for that. So Father, in your, your name, we come right now for any person who has felt the depths of 
suicide ideation, suicidal thoughts, those even who have made plans at different times, and those who've had a means. We ask you bring life now in Jesus' name. We pray, Father God, that you would impart your life in Jesus' name. And we pray, Father God, that as this comes by your spirit and by your power, we pray, Father God, that we would see change even today. And if you know friends or family that have struggled with that, just bring their name right now before Jesus. Let's just take 30 seconds of silent prayer. Bring their name before Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So church, we just really want to be a church that kind of flows with what the Lord's doing. So um, that's if you're here, this is like your first time, and you're like, whoa, that's kind of interesting. Like we really want to be able to respond to the Spirit. And because I, my goal is for you to really encounter the life-changing presence of Jesus and that you would leave here with more hope in your life and more purpose because you've encountered Jesus. Are you okay with that? You with me? Okay, let's give some thanks to God. Uh, I said earlier today to um, a couple of our team, I said, I, I, I sense that God's got something coming out of left field today that has nothing to do uh, with my sermon today. So, uh, so, and just as Margie was sharing that word, I just really got some clarity on what it was. So I, I want to talk to you today, and I'm, I'm not going to talk for long because sometimes when we're in the presence of God, we get, we get saturated and there's only so much we can retain you with me? You feel like a sponge and you're like, I don't want any more. I want to talk about the battlefield today of your mind. And uh, because I really sense that that is where things are won and lost in the Christian life. And some people go, no, 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 no. It's like my heart. It's my heart. But here, let me, let me follow with me. Okay. A lot of times when something is birthed in your mind, it leads to a decision. How do I respond to that thing that is birthed in my mind? And it's at that moment of response when you either say yes or no, or you entertain or you fight, whatever it is that will lead you to the next thing that'll happen. It'll lead to action. And oftentimes it's actions in our lives that end up weighing on our heart. Are you with me? The heart, the centerpiece of our life. As the Jewish people thought, they called it the fountain of emotion. They called it the center of the will. That's how they understood the heart. I want to talk to you quickly about the battlefield in your mind. If you've ever faced a battle, chances are, It's originated here. It's stuck here. There's something that you seem like you can't shake. Are you with me? Because I'm a Christian just like you. I'm a follower of God just like you. I'm not a super person at all. Sometimes people expect me to be some sort of super person. I'm just like you, okay? It's just that I get to talk a lot. and You have to to listen. That's the only difference. Why is the mind so important? Here's why the mind is so important. Because Jesus told us throughout the scriptures that the mind would be the place where we would encounter attack. Why? It says this, and follow with me. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians uh, 2.16. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 2.16. And I want to read for, for you. Make sure I quoted that right. 1 Corinthians 2.16, yeah. I want to read for you about the mind of Christ because we need to know where the battle starts and what happens. It says this, and let's go back to Verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 2, it says this, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly, or they're, they're not wisdom to them. And he's not able to understand them because they are not spiritually discerned. The spiritual person, however, judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understand, understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? And here's what Paul says as he finishes this discourse. He says, but we, speaking of those who follow Jesus, have the mind of Christ. Say that with me. But we have the mind of, say one more time with me, but we have the mind of Christ. The word in its original is meaning possession. 
It means you have it as if you hold it, as if it's something that is to be attained and held. You have the mind of Christ. Paul here has contrary terms. He talks about the person who is fleshly and the person who is spiritual. The person who can't discern the things of God because they seem like folly and the people who are spiritual, those who are trying to follow Jesus, who has understood the mind of the Lord. But he says this, we have the mind of Christ. So what does it give us the ability to do? Having the mind of Christ gives you the ability to understand what's happening in and around you and in and around your life. So how how do you take this scripture and how do you work this scripture into your life? You ever had a battle where it's like there is a thought that you just seem you can't kick out of your mind? There's a thought that literally is playing like it's an old record or an LP. Apparently they're popular again. It's just skipping and skipping and skipping and skipping and skipping and the same thing. Have you ever had a thought that literally it seems that it's so powerful that no matter what you do, it can't leave you? This is where we take this scripture which says we have the mind of Christ and we start to appropriate that thing. So if you have the mind of Christ, if you've been given the mind of Christ, now your goal is to use it. Walter, heads up. Here's something coming for you. Here's this. You can have my water. Now, can you hold that water up? Just hold it up. Does Walter have the water? Is Walter using the water right now? No. Walter, I drank it. You don't need to use it. Okay. But like you have the mind of Christ, Walter has the bottle of water. But Walter right now is not applying the bottle of water. Walter, can you toss it back to me and I'll apply it? And then after this, you can keep your kids awake by pouring some on them. I'm just kidding, Mila and Jacob. It's okay. So here, you have the mind of Christ. Lito, you've got it now. Hold it up. He's got it. The truth is, how do we apply it now? When you face thoughts that you seem to not get rid of, here's one of the keys we do. We remind ourselves, I have been given the mind of Christ. And when you face that thought, the one thing you need, I have been given the mind of and he wants to renew us. It says this in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And Pastor, or Coach talked about this in his sermon a little while ago. It talks about that we are renewed by the transforming of our mind. It says this in verse 2 of Romans 12. And turn with me if you want to. Do not be conformed to this world. Have you ever done pottery or Play-Doh? Yes? Come on, we did it in service the last couple of weeks. My kids love Play-Doh. My daughter, we celebrated a birthday party. She got lots of Play-Doh. Plato is about conforming something, but we want to be transformed. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to it, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may be be able to discern what is the will of God, good, acceptable, and perfect. Church, when we face the thoughts that are hard and we say, God, I have the mind of Christ, that is part of the act of transformation that we need by renewing our minds, by telling ourselves the very truth of God. And you might think, oh, that sounds kind of weird, Pastor Chris. Like, you want me to talk to myself? Yes. Talk to yourself, okay? When a thought comes, if you keep it in silence, what does the thought do? It grows. It grows. It gro- right? It stays there. Literally like there's a ping pong ball in your head. And it's like, right? But as soon as you start verbalizing the things of the word of God, talking to yourself, it starts to change and transform that very thing. The battlefield will be in your mind and in my mind for the things of God. Even today, as you've been in service and you're hearing things in worship, you're hearing things from the God in the prophetic time, the enemy would love to try to snatch that. So when you apply the mind of Christ and you say, I have the mind of Christ, it actually aligns with Jesus when he talked about the parable of the sower. That when he sowed the seed, there was seed that produced fruit, but there was other seed where the cares of the world snatched it out. There was other things where it were taken away by the enemy. When we start to tell ourselves the word of God, that we have the mind of Christ, it starts to change the ability to retain those very things that we know of God. Are you with me? So when you're in the battle, what do you do? Number one, you apply the mind of Christ by verbalizing it. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Here's a great idea. Pull out your phone. Or your Android, or whatever you have. Pull it out. I'm serious. Like, pull it out. I'm not joking with you. Take it out. Open your alarm app. Come on, y'all got phones. I see you, like, on them all the time. <laughs> I can see lots from up here. This is why it's a higher stage, right? Open your phone. Open your alarm app. Go to your alarm. 
Start an alarm. Okay? Turn. Uh, if you've got an iPhone, you do the up or down. I don't know what you Android people do. And God, God be with you if you have a BlackBerry. You're in trouble. Those, uh, <laughs> set the alarm for 2.16. Okay? 2.16. Now, I'm an iPhone user, so I only know how to do so many things. On mine, I can label it. Instead of calling it alarm, I'm going to type in mind of Christ. Mind of Christ. Then I'm going to hit repeat. And you might think it's kind of crazy, but I'm going to go every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Why? Because I need to be reminded that I have the mind of Christ. Keep it for a week. Keep it for a month. But you know what? This is how we get into the discipline, the habits, and the practices of the mind of Christ. So once you do that, you hit save. And I have an alarm that tells me now, 216, everyday mind of Christ. Boom, boom, boom. What's it going to help teach me? 1 Corinthians 2.16, but we have the mind of Christ. Oh, there we go. Someone's got it going off already. You have the mind of Christ. You've been given the mind of Christ. And now we need to appropriate it. Because as we do that, our hearts and minds get transformed, okay? Here's the other thing I want you to turn over to. I want you to turn over. We're going to do two more scriptures today. Ephesians 6.17. Ephesians 6.17. This is Paul where he's talking about the armor of God. If you've never read this, the the New Testament is rife with all sorts of illustrations and analogies. In this case, it's about uh, armor and it's about battle. And it says that, you know, we're not going to wage war uh, against flesh and blood, but it's against powers and principalities. Then Paul tells us about the armor of God that we're supposed to put on. Verse 17, what does it say in verse 17 that we have? Someone just showed it out for me. Verse 17, Ephesians 6. What does it say there? The what? Say it loud. Awesome. You also get the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18 says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayers and supplications. Continuing on. Do you know that Paul gives us this illustration of something that we have been given to fight the battle against principalities and powers? It's the helmet of salvation. It's, this is an analogy that he's using in the time he's speaking into Roman culture where they would understand this. They would understand what it's like to see soldiers suited up. We wouldn't have the same thing in our time now that they would. But he gives an analogy that you've been given something by God to put on your mind, to put over your mind, to protect your mind. Because you've already been given the mind of Christ, right? You got that. So he's renewing that all the time. And as we even remind ourselves, 216, mind of Christ, He's renewing it. Then what else does he give you? He gives you the helmet to put over top of it. Why? Because God knows the battle is in the mind. He knows that. He knows that. And he knows this. And we even know this when we talk about uh, warfare and we talk about the ideas that happen in battle and warfare. That if you had a shot here, done. You get the shoulder, the leg. You might be able to survive. You can take something in the abdomen. You might be able to, but the head, kill shot, done. The enemy knows that too. But I can tell you this, the enemy's scared when you start talking about the helmet of salvation. Why? Because he knows that is what you have as a believer. You are saved. You come under the power of God. You have that very thing and it makes a difference in your life. Flip over with me to Philippians I want to give you just one more thing and then I'll call the worship and prayer team up in just a few moments. Our prayer team is going to be here to pray for you this, um, this service and whatever it is. Maybe it's something that's been brought up by the worship and prayer time and the word. Maybe it's something you just want to agree with them for. It says this, and I'm going to read in Philippians 4. And let's start in... Um, Verse four, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I will say rejoice. Someone say rejoice with me. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, which means asking with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If you give enough, if you serve enough, or if you pray enough, nope, it just says it will. It will. It's there. I don't ever pray for God's peace. I just claim God's peace because it tells me that he himself is our peace and he says the peace of God. Here is what he says. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, 
Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, if anything is worthy of praise, think about these things. There's a power that God, as he renews our mind, has given us by his spirit to actually change the chorus of what we're thinking. Now, I do not want you to think about lunch today. Please do not think about your stomach being hungry or the fact that some of you are so spiritual. You've been fasting for like seven days and you're ready to break that fast and you know where you're going to go. You're going to go to taco time. No, I'm joking. Don't think about lunch. Coach, you thinking about lunch? (laughs) Don't think about the number eight either. Don't think about the number eight. Please don't think about the number eight. Here's the power that happens when God is renewing your mind is that he shifts things and gives us the ability to choose to think about something that is praiseworthy and full of virtue and honorable and just, whatever is pure. So what's the discipline of the mind? You've already got the mind of Christ. You've already got the helmet of salvation. What is the discipline that we practice? Is when those things come in that are ungodly and are broken and are things like all those names or labels... We go, whoop, 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 that's something of the past, that's something of the enemy, that's something not of God. And we go, okay, what's true? What's honorable? What's just? Whatever's pure. If you really want to get into this little morsel of a word today, I would encourage you again to take out your phone, to set an alarm, to have the two things happen in your life. Start an alarm. And you go, four, and you might want to do it at a.m. because you're so spiritual that you're up like coach all the time at like, Four o'clock in the morning. No, that's not true. He's spiritual. It's just four o'clock in the morning. I'm going to set this alarm too. And I'm going to call this alarm. I'm going to call this one. I want to call it whatever, but that doesn't make sense. I'm just going to call it whatever's pure and lovely. I'm going to let that one go off. Why? So that I learn by the pattern of repetition, repetition and the practice of it to shift what things want to come in, whatever the source is. Worship team, would you come? And prayer team, would you come? I really believe that um, just this morning as we just try to follow what the Holy Spirit's doing, um, That when we follow what God's doing by his spirit, especially when he says, hey, how about this rather than this? When we're obedient to that, even in our own lives, God sets us up for something powerful. Because obedience is actually powerful. What did obedience lead to for Jesus? Obedience led to the power of the cross. And we stand here today because of the power of the cross. Obedience leads to something powerful in the Christian life because we say yes to the things that God wants to do even in the midst of not knowing what it might be. So would you stand with me? Father, today we come in your presence and we just thank you that you're, you're the one leading and guiding. We thank you, Father God, that in this moment, in this time, we can respond to you and hear you. And Lord Jesus, when we feel like we're on the edge of breakthrough, Father God, you have your word and your power for us. But also, Lord Jesus, you have your scriptures for us to know so that we can focus our mind on things that are true and just and worthy and love. That we can understand that we've been given the mind of Christ, Father God. And even as we just touch on this truth today in a small way, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would take your word by your spirit and you would amplify it. And Father, for every person here who needs prayer, needs encouragement, Lord, that we sense it in your presence, even as we worship now, in Jesus' name, we pray we'd encounter again just the goodness of God and the power of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to worship for a little bit, but if you want prayer, the prayer team is ready. Just just come on up, and they want to pray with you. They want to agree with you for whatever you need in your life, whether it's something from today or something from the past. They want to pray for you and pray with you. Let's worship. You've just been listening to Life Transformation, 
a weekly podcast of life-changing messages, giving you hope and purpose. If you would like prayer or more resources to a better you, connect with us on our website, sunrise.ca, or follow us on Instagram at sunrisechurchbc.com.